Rachel and Demi have purchased an island on which to open a camp for musical students. They've divided the island into ten sections on which to build cabins for the students. You have the violin section, the piano section, the flute section, clarinet section, saxophones, trumpets, bass section, horn section, oboe section, and drum section. Rachel and Demi have hired you to represent Music Land's ten regions using a graph in which an edge corresponds to a shared border between regions. They would also like you to determine the graph's chromatic number. You have also been commissioned to color the map using a minimum number of colors so that two regions with a shared border must be of different colors. I put a little dot in the center of each one of these sections. I just moved the dots off of that, right? So I'm just basically making a dot for violins and a dot for pianos and just kind of representing this map. But I, I wrote it down here like this. Violins are attached to pianos, so I'm going to put a line there. Okay, and violin is attached to flutes, and pianos are attached to flutes. The piano section is attached to the saxophone section, but notice the piano is not attached to the clarinet, so I'm not going to have a line between piano and clarinet. Flutes are attached to saxophones, flutes are attached to clarinets, clarinets are attached to saxophones, and clarinets to trumpets, and trumpets to saxophones, see right here, they share a border, saxophones to bass, they share a border, bass to trumpets, they share a border, trumpets to horns share a border, trumpets and oboes share a border, bass and the oboes share a border, and the oboes and the horns share a border, and the horns and the drums share a border, and the drums and the oboes share a border. That's it. So F has one, two, three, four vertices going into it. S has one, two, three, four, five. T has one, two, three, four, five. That's like T and S both have five, so you can start with T or you can start with S. I started with T. It doesn't matter which you pick. And I'm starting with yellow. That means all the adjacent ones, the ones that are beside the T, I'm going to try and color them one color. So I'm starting with red. So I'm going to make B red. I can't make Q red because it's attached to B, but I can make H red and I can make C red. The ones that are adjacent to T that are also adjacent to these red dots, I'm going to make those blue. So I'm going to make O and S blue. So then I'm going to move on to another vertex, like this one here, D. D can't be yellow, but blue, and it can't be red, but it can certainly be yellow because it's not attached to the yellow one. So I'm going to make D yellow. Then I'm going to move over to, to F. Now F can't be red, and it can't be blue, So, but it can be yellow because F is not adjacent to a yellow. F can't be yellow, and it can't be blue, but it can be red because it's not adjacent to a red. V, so it can't be yellow, and it can't be red, so it can be blue. And there we go. We've only used three colors, so our chromatic number is three. I'm just going to color the maps. So I'm going to color the map using the colors I've selected for the dots. And that's it. So for the, the yellow are the flutes, the trumpets, and the drums. And then for the red, pianos, clarinets, bass, and horns. And then what's left over? Oboes, saxophones, and violins. I'm going to make blue. And that's it for the first part of the ES. A graph illustrating the trails that Rachel and Demi have made between the various cabin regions is below. The weights represent the distances between the cabin sections in kilometers. Starting at the violin section, V, find the shortest Hamiltonian path that connects all of the cabin sections. You must also find the length of this shortest Hamiltonian path. We're starting with V, but we can go from the V, we can go to the F or to the P. Now the P is shorter, right? It's just one. So I'm going to take the shortest each time I'm given a choice. From P, I can go, I have no choice, I have to go to S. From S, I can go 7, or I can go 10, or 3, or 3. I have to get that F eventually, so I could probably go all the way around and get the F, but I think it's going to be easier to come this way because it's shorter than the 7 or the 10 or the 3. If I went to the 10, I would, you know, like still have to somehow get to the F without going through the S. It's going to be a lot better to go right up to the F. Then I have no choice but to go to the C, and from the C I can't go back to the S because we're doing Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian is all about the vertices, right? So we're going vertex to vertex. We have to cover all the vertices without visiting a vertex twice. C is going to go to T, and then T to, I have a choice, I could go down to the 8 or along the 7. 7 shorter, so I'm going to take the 7. See, now I'm kind of running out of choices. If I went down the C, I would have to come back to the D, and then I'd be stuck. But I'm going to continue around the D to the C. And then from the D, I don't really have much of a choice, to the B, and I'm done. So that's my Hamiltonian path. And so that's V to P to S to F to C to T to H to D to O to B, which is 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11 plus 4 is 15 plus 7 is 22 plus 8 is 30 plus 7 is 37 plus 9 is 46. That's 46 kilometers. 
between all of these cabin sections. The final part. Rachel and Demi are planning to build a clubhouse on Musicland. The following are the steps required to build the clubhouse. You have been commissioned to make a graph of this situation, determine the critical path, and determine the minimum time required to complete all of the tasks. I'm going to start with A, and then I'm going to... A goes to B. We see that the prior steps, like B has A as a prior step, I put the B here. A also goes to C, so I put the C beside the A. B goes to D, I put the D up here. B goes to D, and that's it. E has... C and D as prerequisites. So I put the E here. Then we have F, and it has E as a prerequisite. E goes to F. E also goes to G. H has F as a prerequisite, so F goes to H. I has F as a prerequisite, so F goes to I as well. J has H and I as a prerequisite, so H and I both go to J. K has D, G, G, and J as a prerequisite. K has D, G, and J as a prerequisite. That's why I put the D so high up so I can get a straight line to the K. J goes to it and G goes to it. L has K as a prerequisite. M also has K as a prerequisite, so I put it beside and lower. N has L and M as prerequisites. Okay, so I'm going to draw some arrows. A goes to B, and A also goes to C. B goes to D, and C goes to E, and D goes to E. So that's why these arrows are so important. So it shows you the direction. You have to have the arrows. E goes to F. E also goes to G. F goes to H, and goes to I. H goes to J, and I goes to J. J goes to K, and K goes to L. Whoops, D goes to K as well and G also goes to K. Then K goes to L, and K goes to M, and L goes to N, and M goes to N, and that's it. All right, so let's go and put the weights down. A has a length of 10. That means it's gonna take 10 days to get from A to B, and from A to C. B has a length of five, so we put a five here. C has a length of eight, so we put an eight down there. D has a length of 11, so 11 and 11. I'm gonna put 11 here in a second. E has a length of seven, so there's my seven. I'm going to put another 7 right there. F has a length of 5. So I'm going to put a 5 here and a 5 down there. H has a length of 4. So I'm going to put a 4 there. I has a length of 3. So we could put a 3 right there. J has a length of 3. Don't forget that D, which was at a length of 11, also goes here. And G has a length of 3. There's my 3. K has a length. It takes 7 days for K. So I'm going to put a 7 here and there. My two 7s. L has a length of 6. And M has a length of 3. That's it. Then we want to think about our critical paths. The first nexus point is E. If I can take A to B to D to E or A to C to E. If I went from A to C to E, that's only 18. If I went from A to B to D to E, well, that's 10 plus 5, 15 plus 11 is 26. I'm definitely going to go this way. Well, we're going to get to F, and then we're going to get to J and to K, but to get to K, we could also come this way, all right? If we went this way, that's just 7 plus 3 is 10. But if we went this way, I can go 7 plus 5. Right away, we're, we're more than 10. Like 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So it would take 18 to go this way, or it would take 10 to go that way. So we, we have to go the slower route. If we went 10, then this wouldn't have time to happen. So we would end up skipping steps in our building process. We have to go the slowest route. We're definitely going to go this way, but the question is, like, if we went this way, it's 18. If we went that way, 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. We go this way. We have 7 plus 5, or 7 plus 3. Well, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 7 plus 3 is 10, so I'm going to go the 12 route. Let's add them all up. We're going from A to B to D to E to F to H to J to K to L to N. The distance is going to be 10 plus 5 plus 11 plus 7 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 7 plus 6. 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 11 is 26 plus 7 is 33 plus 5 is 38 plus 4 is 42 plus 4. 5 is 45, plus 7 is 52, plus 6 is 58, okay? So it would take 58 days is the shortest, is the minimum amount of time required to build the house. If you took another path, like if I went from A to B to D to K to M to N, like that would be a really fast path. So 10 plus 5 plus 11 
So that's 15, 26, 33, 36. It would only take 36 days to go this way. We wouldn't have time for all of these other things to happen. We'd be skipping over steps. It's like the pizza scenario. If it takes you 10 minutes to make the sauce and it takes you 20 minutes to make the dough, you can't just throw the sauce into the oven and expect a pizza to be made. You have to put the sauce on top of the dough. You can't take the shortest path. You have to take the path that takes the longest. The minimum time required is going to be the longest amount of time required, which is 58 days. And that's it for the ES. Have a good day.